Okay, so one of the things that would be kind of interesting to do is to be able to look at how to filter data uh, by date. So in this data set, we have some flight dates here. Uh, it would be interesting to be able to, inside the pivot table, to sort of control or filter by date. That's uh, something that you're going to encounter uh, in this project and also uh, out in your career as analysts and our officers. So just as an example, let's say I have my unique carrier, so I want to look at the origin. And then let's say I want to look at the PAX count. So this is the sum of the passengers that fly out of each airport uh, to the very, uh, by the different carriers. And let's say that I want to look at the date uh, just for like maybe one month. So one of the ways we can do that is, you know, we could drag this down here under unique carriers and sort of look, you know, for each carrier we could enumerate every single date. And you can go up here maybe under um, inside of your filter and you can look at a date here and you could maybe select the dates that you wanted. So, you know, if you want to look just for the first three days of the year, you could do something like this. So that's one strategy. Another strategy is to put the date up in the filter and up here do the same thing, you know, select everything, have all the data there. And here you don't get those uh, detailed by each, you know, for each airline, you don't get a detailed breakdown by day. It sort of runs it all together. And if you want to, you know, just do the first three days. So that's a pretty interesting strategy. Another way is to sort of do a filter in place. So leave the uh, date up here and we could select the drop down here you can go to date filters and select between. So really quick that's I selected it so it kind of puts it in the row but then under here I hit this drop down arrow I hit date filters and I'm going to do between. And now I can do, say, 1-1-2012 one, one, uh, to maybe 2-1-2012. And I can hit OK. Uh, and that's basically doing the same thing as the row filter, except you know, rather than going in and selecting this uh, by hand, it's sort of taking care of the between part for you. Um, so it's kind of nice to hide this information so the way you can hide it is you can right click go to expand collapse and put collapse entire field and now this is what I want right here so this is the sum of you know for the between dates between dates of these two dates this is the number and if I copy and paste this to a sheet it comes in clean uh, so you don't get those annoying things. This is kind of what I want to work with, which allows me to take a filter, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to take a pivot table and filter by a certain date rather easily. So we're going to go ahead and try this strategy um, with VBA. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just restore this back to sort of its original uh, configuration. I'm going to go ahead and open up my VBA editor. And I went ahead and kind of pre-populated this. So you can see we had the flights by origin. That's what we just talked about. Uh, the packs by origin, I just took the exact same code. And down here, instead of you know looking at the ID, I did a count uh, packs of the sum, and I have sort of packs by origin. So let's go ahead and call that really quick. And if I look at that, then I have packs by origin. So I have a sum of packs and origin. So that's partially what I want. So now all I want to do is add in the date functionality to this. So this is actually very few lines of code that we have to uh, sort of add. So once at the, once I get down here to the bottom where I put in my sum, I'm going to go ahead and specify the date. Um, so, it would be kind of interesting if we had a place to input this date. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to make a new sheet, maybe um, call this Pax Dates. And I'm going to put start and maybe I'll put month, day, year, and end, month, day, year, and I'll put in say one. 1 2012 and 1 2 1 2012 and I'll put in packs uh, filter data or something like that dates so this is sort of maybe a, a GUI where I am going to allow the user to insert different values that they can run the filter in so I have start and end something like that so now down here inside of this code, I'm going to pull those dates. Um, I'm going to put dim start date as date, dim end date as date, and I'm going to put in here um, go back to my control really quick. And I'm going to put a helper down here. I'm going to put in date. And date, I'm going to put in year, comma, month, comma, day. So now I have a good date there. And here I'm going to put in date, year, comma, month, comma, day. So now I have a properly formatted date. And I haven't left the user to anything. All the user's got to do is enter integers for month, day, and year. This goes back to an earlier strategy, which I mentioned is, you know, when you work with dates, if you can break it into its components and have the user work with those, uh, you're much better off. So now I have sort of A6 and D6 as my start and end. So now I'm going to set start date equals sheets. And I need the sheet name. Which is pack states, and it's A6. And then end date is going to equal D6. So now I'm going to go ahead and filter by the date. So I can put in PT, pivot fields. Now I know I want the date field. And I want to go ahead and put in um, pivot filter, add. And the type of the filter is going to be a Excel date between. And the value 1, which is the lower value, is going to equal to my start date, which I just pulled from my worksheet. And value 2 is equal to my end date. And then the last thing I want to do, well, let's go ahead and run this and see if it works like we want it to. So do my packs by origin. Okay, so something happened here. All right, what happened is this isn't date, this is FL date. So if you look at my code here, this is FL date. So if I run that, it should have worked. Going back to my Excel pivot table. didn't quite seem to work out like I wanted it to. And it looks like the filter is probably being set, but it's just not active. Okay, and the reason for that is up here under my row fields, I have unique carrier, and you'll notice that I'm, I wanted to show up here. 
So what I'm going to do is I need to add in the FL date here. So now if I go back to my pivot table, let me go ahead and get rid of this information. You'll notice here that I'm getting my dates like one. So I have unique carrier and date. This goes all the way through March. If I go to my PAX dates, you can see I put March here. So if I put in 2-15-2012 and I rerun my script, it's going down to the 15th. So the last thing I want to do is be able to do uh, that trick where I collapse the entire field and just get this. So let's do that really quick. That is one line of code, which is at the very end I put in um, PT pivot tables or pivot fields, and I put in um, unique carrier, and I put in dot show detail equals false. So I have sort of unique carrier, and then under that is the detail is the flight date. So for each carrier, show me each date. In this case, I say don't show that. And that should work. And that's what I want. So one more time, just double check. My default start, packs by origin. And now I've got what I want, which is if I want to expand this, I can see all those dates. If not, it just shows me the roll-up. Okay, so the last thing you might want to do is to be able to sort of capture this data and save it somewhere. So I highly recommend that rather than copying the pivot table, so if you can, you know, you can copy this pivot table and paste it here. And so this is a pivot table object, which is okay, but it's a lot of wasted memory because this has its own cache, its own database underneath of it, so it's really going to cause your worksheet to bloat. Also, there are instances when you copy uh, pivot tables when if the underlying data changes, this will cause it to refresh, which is not, which could cause your analysis to change. So what we really want is to snapshot this data. So this is a complete sort of snapshot in time of what we want. It has the date set, you know, where we want them to. If we go in here, between dates are set for the period that we're interested in. Sorry, here. So this represents everything that we want. We want to be able to copy this. So we hit copy, go over here, and I'm going to do a paste special and just paste the values. Now this is preserved uh, forever as you know static text. So let's do that uh, really quickly with uh, some VBA code. So at the end of my procedure where I uh, configure the table, I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, PT, table range, table range 2 dot copy. So that's going to get the header and all the data by default. So table range 2 represents the table or tabular data of the pivot table. And then I want to go ahead and select my uh, worksheet for the results. So WS summary. So WS summary uh, select. And then I'm going to paste on that active sheet range starting at A1. I'm going to do a paste special. And I want to do a paste Excel paste values. Got this here. So I selected the pivot table, copy it, then I select the summary and paste it. Now if I run this, I can see that my summary sheet has the data that I want. And this is for the period. 1, 1 through 12, 15. So let's just for fun copy this down here. And this is 1, 1, 2012 through 2, 15, 2012. 
and let's go ahead and save let's set this maybe for uh, one month we'll set it for the first 15 days of 2012 oops that wasn't supposed to do that I'm supposed to change it up here 1 15 2012 So 115. So this is my date for the end. This is my date for the start. Select packs by origin. And now I've got uh, just the packs for that first period of time. So you can clearly, clearly see the strategy here is using the VBA code to programmatically uh, configure the pivot table, get the data for the range you want, copy it. Uh, to And this is really kind of what gets plotted or analyzed. So you'd have, you know, for each month of data, you can have you know you can have sort of a table or a yeah a table and some chart over here for each one of these months and that's kind of how you roll out uh with real analysis is you use a pivot table programmatically then make copies of it and paste it uh into static text and make your charge